Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. When viewed from the horizon, a cargo ship may appear as nothing more than a speck against the vastness of the sea. But up close, these colossal vessels are awe-inspiring, comparable to skyscrapers laid on their side, yet capable of floating across oceans with astonishing ease. Container ships are purpose-built for one mission, to transport massive volumes of cargo efficiently and reliably across the globe. The modern era of containerized shipping began in 1956 with the maiden voyage of the Ideal X, which traveled from Newark, New Jersey to Houston, Texas. This event marked a turning point in global trade, revolutionizing the logistics industry and dramatically reducing shipping costs and transit times. Constructed primarily from high-strength steel, container ships come in various sizes, from small feeder ships capable of carrying a few hundred containers to ultra-large container vessels, or ULCVs, that can haul more than 20,000 containers at once. The construction of these maritime giants is a monumental task, often taking many months and involving multiple stages. The power required to propel these vessels is immense. Once a ship's design is finalized by naval architects, engineers begin the process by cutting and welding steel plates to form the hull, decks, and superstructure. After the ship's frame is complete, its heart and brain, engines, navigation systems, and communication technologies are carefully installed. The engines powering these maritime behemoths are engineering marvels, complex, massive, and built for endurance. The assembly of such an engine begins with the construction of the engine block, which consists of numerous, precisely machined components brought together into a single, massive structure. Following this, large pistons are installed, each one connected to a crankshaft that converts their vertical motion into the rotational force needed to drive the propeller. Critical to the engine's operation are its fuel injection and lubrication systems, which ensure continuous combustion and reduce wear on moving parts. Turbochargers are also integrated to enhance performance, compressing incoming air to improve fuel efficiency and power output. The air supply system works alongside them to guarantee a consistent flow of oxygen essential for the combustion process. Once the engine is fully assembled, it undergoes rigorous testing. Engineers verify performance, fuel efficiency, emissions output, and operational reliability under various simulated conditions. Only after meeting these exacting standards is the engine approved for installation into the ship's engine room. Depending on size, materials, and systems, container ships can cost anywhere from tens of millions to well over $150 million. Larger engines, higher grade steel, advanced navigation systems, and environmental compliance technologies all contribute to the complexity and final price tag of these modern-day giants of the sea. Stepping into a container ship's engine room is like entering the mechanical heart of a floating city. Visitors are immediately overwhelmed by the sheer scale and complexity of the machinery. Towering engines dominate the space, their immense size almost surreal up close.
alongside this visual spectacle comes a relentless symphony of sound, a deep, thunderous rumble that reverberates through the deck plates, interspersed with sharp hisses of compressed air and the rhythmic clatter of shifting metal components. The atmosphere is intense. Temperatures often soar well above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, driven by the continuous operation of high power engines and associated systems. For many visitors, the engine room inspires a deep sense of awe, a powerful reminder of the immense forces and fine-tuned coordination required to propel these steel giants across the world's oceans. Sometimes these enormous propellers must be inspected while the ship is still in the water. The easiest way to conduct these inspections is by using commercial or military divers. Military divers must be well-trained as they are responsible for conducting many underwater activities and missions throughout the world. The gear used by divers must be exceptional if one considers where they're expected to dive. U.S. Coast Guard divers perform various types of dives, including under the polar ice caps, as well as when propeller and hull inspections are needed on their ships. Propeller maintenance is a risky job, but diving under the ice caps requires specialized training due to the freezing water and claustrophobic environment. In these types of environments, their training and gear make all the difference. Situations such as the exercise to remove oil from a World War II shipwreck gives us a peek into their world. Divers at 180 feet work to seal oil valves on the Coimbra shipwreck. At the start of May 11, 2019, a joint U.S. Coast Guard and New York Department of Environmental Conservative Command expertly extracted 106,101 gallons of stranded oil. <laughs> U.S. Coast Guard divers have the capability to prevent emerging environmental catastrophes like these. Another area of expertise for divers is getting involved with submarine rescue scenarios. The NATO Submarine Rescue System, or NSRS, is a joint effort of three NATO member countries, France, Norway, and the United Kingdom. It is meant to rescue people from sinking submarines and can dive to depths of up to 600 meters. We go down to the submarine, we then mate with the submarine, we drain the water down to make sure there's the hydrostatic pressure to hold the submarine on top of the disabled submarine. Once the hatch is opened, we can go inside the submarine. We can lift casualties out of the submarine and bring them into the rescue vehicle, unload the personnel into the transfer under pressure system where they can receive medical treatment. Let's get you connected to the machines. Feel okay? It has never been necessary to use the NSRS, but its intervention, remotely piloted vehicle, or RPV, was used to save the lives of seven Russian submariners in 2005. The RPV was used to cut cables holding the submarine on the seabed to accomplish their rescue. In modern warfare, aircraft are the most valuable assets in strategic operations, such as attack, defense, surveillance, and logistical support.
transport aircraft like the C-130 deliver troops and supplies with rapid mobility across the theater of operations. The four Allison T-56 turboprop engines powering the Hercules follow a sequence during engine startup. The propellers on the right wing, engine numbers three and four, initiate the starting sequence, while engine number three is the very first to receive pneumatics from the APU. Once both right wing engines are up and running, the engines on the left wing receive pneumatics for the startup. The C-130 is self-sustaining as it houses an auxiliary power unit located ahead of the left wheel well. The APU provides the required air pressure to each engine through the air turbine starter. Usually, a pre-flight inspection is carried out prior to each engine starting for takeoff. This ensures the engines are free from ailments and in the proper condition for a spin. During the pre-flight inspection, maintenance personnel conduct a walk around covering each corner of the aircraft. A typical walk around is divided into two phases, inspecting the top of the aircraft and the exterior of the aircraft. To inspect the top of the aircraft, maintenance technicians climb onto the aircraft and walk on the fuselage and wings, scouring for defects. More importantly, engine nacelles are inspected for proper closure of service panels and the condition of propellers and de-icing boots. During the exterior walk around, engines are inspected from a different angle to identify fluid leakages and their general condition. While many measures are intended to cut down the takeoff time, refueling can be a point that introduces a bottleneck in the overall process. The US Air Force came up with the genius method of hot pit refueling cutting down the time taken for refueling to expedite the turnaround time. As the name suggests, during hot pit refueling, the engines of the aircraft remain running. When the refueling is done, the aircraft can take off quickly to join the mission. The Versatile Integrating Partner Equipment Refueling Kit, or Viper Kit, is the newest addition to hot pit refueling that allows a multitude of aircraft to receive fuel from the same source. The Viper Kit is a universal system that can be fitted with various adapters depending on the aircraft being refueled. The kit improves the interoperability of U.S. aircraft as they can receive fuel from any source with the Viper kit without needing full refueling gear. This saves a small fortune for the U.S. Air Force and Allied forces in moving hefty refueling gear across the globe. The Viper kit caters to almost all aircraft in the U.S. military from B-1 bombers to fifth-generation fighters and C-130 transport platforms. In every domain, sea, sky, or beneath the waves, the complexity and coordination behind military and maritime operations are staggering, from building and powering massive container ships to maintaining aircraft in rapid deployment scenarios. Each system relies on human expertise, cutting-edge technology, and unwavering precision. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.
see you next time.